Hi viewers, this is J Swami, Assistant Professor of Zoology. Today we are going to discuss the aquaculture and the types of fisheries. Under this topic, we are going to discuss introduction, definition of the aquaculture and fishery, blue revolution regarding aquaculture and the events which have been occurred in the farming fishes and other aquatic animals. First of all, the farming of economically important aquatic animals like fishes, crabs, crustaceans, mollusks and aquatic plants under controlled environmental conditions is known as the aquaculture. We can also define the aquaculture as the rearing of aquatic organisms under controlled or semi-controlled conditions. And we can also define it the rearing of desirable aquatic organisms under confined conditions for economic or social benefits. And another definition simply we can say the large scale husbandry or rearing of aquatic organisms for commercial purposes. Thus, aquaculture is concerned with the propagation and rearing of aquatic organisms under complete human control involving the manipulation of at least one stage of their life before harvest in order to increase their production. Aquaculture includes the culture of fishes, crustaceans like prawns, shrimps, crabs, lobsters, mollusks like oysters, Paralysters, mussels, calms, snails, and we can also rear echinoderms like the sea urchins and sea cucumbers, and also the frogs, marine plants like the uh, seaweeds. That is, the cultivable organisms are reared in special conditions. Right now. As we know the uh, green revolution, here we are using a term that is a blue revolution. Why? Because worldwide in every year 10 million people die either of the starvation or due to the malnutrition. The emerging population in the world is responsible for the food shortage. To overcome this problem, man is trying to implement new techniques in food production. Aquaculture is one of the important practices in this direction. Already we know the green revolution which is dealing with the uh, production of enhancement of the production of the agriculture yield. So here also the blue revolution that term it is always deals with the enhancement of the production or yield of the fishes and other aquatic organisms which are generally consumed by the people. Aquaculture is an uh, age old practice and developed into a modern science during the recent years. Aquaculture has become one of the most uh, lucrative of the farming practices. Capture fisheries have been the main source of our fish production generally. However, the production uh, from capture fisheries has not been increasing in recent times because of pollution and over exploitation of the natural stocks all over the world. As an alternative for this, aquaculture appears to be the most suitable means of increasing fish production. And if you observe what is the importance of this blue revolution and the aquatic production, aquatic organisms are the most important source of the animal proteins to the people. An abundant low cost protein rich food through aquaculture production will solve the problem of balanced diet of the people. The aquatic resources of our country are rich and varied in terms of uh, types of both water species. Uh, water and uh, species of fish and the shellfish. Shellfish means the organisms which have the uh, external shell which protects the body. For example, if you observe the mollusks and all those uh, crustaceans, they have the 
calcium carbonated or chitinous shell around their body. And aquaculture also provides scope for wastewater utilization to produce food. The utilization of aquatic resources to a maximum extent for getting higher food production has led to the blue revolution. Here we will uh, observe from the ancient times for the first time the Chinese were used to uh, culture the carps. Carps fishes were uh, reared by Chinese. Uh, carp in China thousand year, thousands of years ago were collected as seed and transferred to special ponds where they were grown. And afterwards the Egyptians and the Romans Egyptians and the Romans they proved that this practice is not limited for the fishes but also they extended this practice for many other species such as oysters and other hardy creatures capable of surviving the transfer to the culture ponds. For the first time uh, the fish farming in its modern form was first introduced in 1733 fish farm in its modern form was introduced in 1733 by a German farmer successfully what he did is he gathered fish eggs and fertilize them and then grows and raise the fish that uh, up to hatching so what he did is he has taken one male fish and one female fish during the breeding season he has collected spams from the male fish and the eggs from the female fish by pressing their abdomen and mix them thoroughly in the favorable conditions to uh, encourage the fertilization process and thereby they fertilize and form the zygotes these zygotes after hatching they become fishlings fishlings otherwise this is the seed of the fishes this is the seed of the fishes these fishlings were transferred to tanks or ponds where actually they will be cultivated. So previously and initially this fish farming is limited to freshwater fish only. In the 20th century new techniques were developed to successfully breed uh, marine water species also. Marine water species also. And if you observe uh, furthermore the farming of fish, shrimp, shellfish and seaweeds has been a source of human protein for nearly 4000 years, especially in Asia. And if you observe the uh, aquaculture production in between the 1984 to 1994, okay, uh, it is doubled. If you observe the aquaculture production uh, now, it is 20% of globally, globally of about 20% of all fish and shellfish production is attributed to aquaculture. But by 2025, by 2025, it may reach 50%. The contribution of aquaculture to worldwide food is going to reach 50% by year 2025. So, in the production of uh, aquaculture products, the China stood in the first place, whereas India stood in the second, uh, second place and the Japan stood in third place. See here, China contributes of about 68% of overall aquaculture production china is the world largest aquaculture producer accounting for 68% of all aquaculture products india is the second one 
it contributes 6 to 10 percent of aquaculture production and the Japan is at the third place and what are the main objectives of the aquaculture main objectives of the aquaculture first and foremost one is the to produce nutritious and economically economically viable animal proteins and supplement for the malnutrition first thing to produce the nutritious and economically viable animal proteins to the population to overcome the starvation otherwise the malnutrition condition and second one is the to properly utilize the available uh, natural water resources and and it is also helpful to earn the foreign exchange and to create employment opportunities to uplift the socio-economic status of the people and then utilization of the byproducts of the fish like the icing glass and the uh, pearlescence, fish liver oil, cod liver oil, fish protein concentrate, fish glue etc. for other purposes and ornamental fish like uh, angel fish, black molly, red spot tail, blue gourami and that will uh, give some work and uh, financial support to the aquaries and the production of quality seed of Indian and exotic crops by inducive breeding, development of indoor hatcheries, nurseries, rearing and stocking methods and we can also go for the integrated fish culture. So integration of the fish culture with the agriculture, poultry, duck rearing and prawn breeding. So this is the integrated fish culture. And finally the to meet the future food in the form of annual protein requirements of the ever growing population, judicious utilization of aquatic resources and adoption of scientific farm management techniques are to be encouraged. So thereby we may uh, enhance the aquaculture uh, products up to 50% by 2025. So this is all about the uh, aquaculture and the main objectives of the aquaculture. And now see what are the uh, important organisms which are to be uh, reared or cultivated in the aquaculture technology or management. First of all, let us start with the uh, freshwater fishes. Apart from the freshwater fishes, the first three are the Indian major carps. They are commonly called as the Indian major carps. So, apart from the Indian major carps, first one is the Katla Katla, commonly called as Katla. So, in the villages, they will, uh, the vernacular name of the Katla Katla is Krishna Boche. Followed by Labio Rohita, Rohu, and it is vernacularly called as the Ragandi. Then third one is the Sirenus Mrigala, common name is Mrigal and the vernacular name is Erramosu. Then followed by Chinese carps, Cyprinus Scorpio. This is known as common carp, otherwise China carp. Then Tino Faringodon Idella, it is known as the grass carp. Then Hypophthalmicthes molitrix, it is silver carp. And Clarius batrachus, catfish, is also known as marpu, vernacular name. And Heteroneustis fossilis, it is known as the singi, uh, palmujella. Then most abundantly available fish in uh, Telangana and India regions, Tilapia Mozambica is Tilapia, common name is and the vernacular name is Guraka. These all are the uh, abundantly available freshwater fishes, otherwise easily 
grown fresh water fishes then coming to the brackish water fishes the main important three uh, organisms are there chanos chanos milk fish or palachepa and latis calcarifer sea perch or pandugopa and mugil cephalus grey mullet otherwise bontalu is the uh, vernacular name then prawns or shrimps apart from the prawns or shrimps in general shrimps are the prawns which are uh, cultivated in the oceans other in the marine water pinus monodon is commonly called as the tiger shrimp and the vernacular name is cartleroya pinus indicus white shrimp and the vernacular name is tellaroya and macrobrachium rosenbergi it is commonly called as a giant river prawn and also known as a scampi finally macrobrachium malcomsoni it is known as the monsoon river prawn monsoon river prawn and then the crabs which are useful for the cultivation are silla tranquibarica green crab silla sherata red crab and silla oceanica it is known as the mud crab green crab red crab and the mud crab are the commonly cultivable crabs then come to the mollusks like the pearl oysters uh, pinctada fucata and the pinctada vulgaris these are the two species which are extensively used in the um, pearl oyster farming and the seaweeds apart from the seaweeds gilediella gilidium gracilaria these are commonly called as the red algae followed by sargassum laminaria macrocystis these are known as the brown algae these red algae and brown algae also be cultivable in india and if you come to the nutritional value and the other usages of the uh, fishes if you take into consideration 100 grams of fish meal 100 grams of fish meat it constitutes 15 to 22 percent of proteins 15 to 22 percent of proteins uh, 0.2 to 20 percent of fats apart from them omega 3 fatty acids are also there which are responsible for the appropriate development of the nervous system 150 to 800 milligrams of the calcium 230 to 700 milligrams of phosphorus 4 to 20 milligrams of iron and other minerals 100 to 900 kilocalories of energy and these are the nutritional values and from the shark liver oil we will obtain vitamin a and cod liver oil we will get vitamin d and the fish guano the solid waste of the fish it may be used as the fertilizer for other uh, agriculture farms and fish meal this is scraped fish that may be used as the feed for the poultry industry and shark green it is a dry skin of the sharks that is also used as the abrasive to polish the uh, goods and the ornamental products so these are the uh, nutrition value and usage of by products of the fishes come to the organizations uh, which are concerned with the organizations which are concerned with the aquaculture in india so these are the uh, names of institutions 
or organizations which are usually asked in competitive examinations. First one is the CMFRI, Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute, Cochin. CIFA, Central Institute of Freshwater Aquaculture, Kausalyanagar, Odisha. And CIBA, Central Institute of Brackish Water Aquaculture, Chennai. CICFRI, Central Inland Capture Fisheries, Research Institute, Barakpur, Kolkata. MPEDA, Marine Products Export Development Authority, where actually the uh, large harbors are there. So, these uh, development authority kept their export stations and thereby they will export all the aquaculture products and the fish products. And come to the uh, types of fisheries types of fisheries. The term fishery denotes the exploitation of fish and other related aquatic organisms. Several terms are used to describe the nature of fishery. They either indicate the habitat, the type of organisms or methods of obtaining the resource. Okay, They are usually used in the uh, fishery industry. Fisheries is an occupation or industry of catching fish or taking other products of sea, streams, lakes, reservoirs from water. The importance of fish as food has been understood by man from antiquity and fishery is regarded as powerful income and employment generator as it stimulates the growth of number of ancillary industries. This is also a foreign exchange earner besides providing balanced protein food for all class of people and these uh, fisheries can be classified into fin fisheries and the shell fisheries or non-fin fisheries. Fisheries classified into fin fisheries and the shell fisheries or non-fin fisheries. Fin fisheries means those animals which have the locomotory organs like the fins, uh, pectoral fins, pelvic fins and the uh, dorsal fin, ventral fin, <coughs> anal fin, caudal fin like that. Those animals which have the fins, they are known as the fin fisheries. And the shell fisheries deals with the animals which have the shell around their body for their protection. And now the fin fisheries get divided into capture fisheries and the culture fisheries. F fin fisheries further categorized into two types capture fisheries and the culture fisheries. Capture fisheries are catching type it is refers to the catch of fish from rivers and reservoirs by using suitable craft and gears. Capture fisheries is exploitation of aquatic organisms without stocking the sea. Recruitment of these species occur naturally. Capture fishery is the either marine or inland. So we will name them on different on their uh, location where we catch the fisheries. Marine fishery here we are seeing different kinds of fisheries. Marine fishery is related to the capturing of fishes in the oceans otherwise in the sea that is in the sea if the resource is captured from then if it is from open water it is called as the offshore fishery if the resource is captured from coastal waters it is known as the inshore fishery if the capture is from estuaries or freshwater and it is known as the inland fishery so where actually we are capturing the fishes based upon the location based upon the habitat thereby we are naming the uh, fishery industry uh, fish yield uh, fish yield decreases gradually in capture fisheries due to the indiscriminate catching of fish including the brooders and juveniles overfishing destroys the fish stocks Pollution and environmental factors influence the fish yield. The catches include both desirable and undesirable 
varieties this is all about the capture fishery and culture fisheries if you see uh, culture fisheries are the cultivation of selected fishes in confined areas with utmost care to get maximum yield the term fisiculture some of the times we also use pisciculture instead of fish culture we may also use the pisciculture is used when the organisms cultured are exclusively fin fishes fish culture in india is undoubtedly hundreds of years old and is mentioned kautilya's arthashastra 300 before christ uh, the seed is stocked in the culture fishery what we will do is the seed is procured as stocked and nursed and reared in confined waters then the crop is harvested culture takes place in ponds which are fertilized uh, and supplementary feeds are provided to fish to get maximum yield in order to overcome the problems found in capture fisheries to increase the production considerable attention is being given to the culture fisheries culture fisheries is conducted in fresh water brackish water and sea waters with the development and expansion of new culture systems farming of a wide variety of aquatic organisms like prawns crabs mollusks uh, frogs seaweeds etc have come under the culture fisheries if you observe if you uh, culture the fish in the fresh water it is known as the inland culture fishery and if you grow them in the brackish water eucherine culture fishery and if it is sea water marine culture fishery we have already uh, discussed the different kinds of uh, organisms which are grown in different uh, locations so we have already uh, noted the organism which are used for the cultivation coming to the shell fishery apart from the classification of fisheries so the second one is a shell fishery this shell fishery or non fin fishery is concerned with the capturing and culturing of aquatic organisms with shells like crustaceans such as crabs lobsters prawns and mollusks etc it is known as the shell fish fishery or non fish non fin fishery shell fish which are invertebrates generally from the aquatic uh, environment so the body of the organisms covered by a shell or by a chitinous outer covering in crustaceans if you observe like the prawns and lobsters the body is covered by an external skeleton while in mollusks the majority are enclosed in shells fisheries based on the group of organisms that are captured so they are shell fishery resources are considered under the crustaceans and molluscan shellfish which are valuable commercial important resources in marine and coastal waters uh, crustacean shellfish are shrimps lobsters prawns and the crabs in india the shrimp is an important resource in marine waters so just now we discussed the pinus monodon pinus indicus there is a tiger prawn and the white prawn shrimps are present near the bottom layers and are benthic in form benthic in nature they move as large shells in the bottom layers they spawn in the sea waters and the small larvae migrate to the coastal eucherine regions where they stay for some period and finally they migrate to the deeper regions of the ocean as they become adults so by this we have uh, come to know there are two kinds of fisheries capture and the culture fisheries okay they are apart from the fin fisheries and the non fin fisheries that they include the all the invertebrates like organisms which are belongs to uh, phylum arthropoda and some of them they belongs to mollusca and some of them they are uh, echinoderms too so this is all about the introduction to aquaculture and types of fisheries thank you thank you one and all